Hello, welcome. It's uh, great to see you here. Um, I don't know how many people we've got on the line at the moment, but if you are here, please do say hello in the chat. It would be great to know who's here. Uh, got an interesting uh, live stream for you, not uh, what's become usual, a kind of uh, fully prepared presentation on a topic, but just some musings about the recent past and the possible future of project management. Um, based on the fact that I've hit a milestone of 100,000 subscribers. So it's uh, it's great uh, to have that under my belt. And I'm kind of looking forward to having the opportunity, maybe, of, uh, of getting one of those pretty uh, YouTube silver uh, play buttons. Uh, believe uh, that they get in touch with creators shortly after they've just checked that everything is fine with the channel so that's great so thank you all very much for that and as part of that thanks i'm going to be giving away uh, some substantial prizes today so uh, please do uh, stay on if you're keen to win a prize and i will let you know a bit about that as we go through and if you're watching this on replay don't worry because i will also be offering uh, prizes for people who are watching on replay, which means you can kind of watch it a second time, I guess, and uh, perhaps have a second a second go if you didn't win. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward to that as well. So, got lots of uh, lots of things to talk to talk about. Uh, so, who have we got? We've got Nicola uh, Nicola uh, from Canada uh, on the line. Uh, we've got C Vivian. Hello from Hong Kong. Can that be Charles Vivian that I know, or is it just a coincidence? Um, so if that is you, Charles, uh, it's great to see you. Uh, and if it's not, it's great to have you here anyway. Uh, we've got Patrick uh, as well. That's brilliant. Um, and then Jude, Judah. Uh, let me know where you're from uh, or where you're watching from and what your involvement is with uh, project management. If I don't know you uh, and I don't. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. Jude, Judah doesn't ring a bell. Uh, we've got Dawn FD as well. Hi there. Um, and Ian Walters from Leighton Buzzard in the UK. Okay, not a million miles away uh, from me. I'm kind of south coast-ish, but uh, that's good. Um, so that's nice. So it's good to have people uh, just saying hello in the chat. It's uh, it's nice to know where where people are uh, and what's going on. Oh, of course we've got Hambo Gumble. Skipped you skipped over your name. Uh, apologies. Uh, regular here. Uh, we can see the regulars because uh, they've got uh, their names in blue and uh, the little kind of spanner symbol, which means that they can uh, moderate chat if they need to. Ah, Juju from Morocco. Excellent, it's uh, great to have you here. Um, yeah, lovely. Um, so, uh, what are we gonna be doing? Well, we're going, we've got a, uh, a number of things I wanna talk about. I wanna cover uh, where I think project management has made some big changes over the last 10 years and where I think it might make some big changes in the next 10 years. I want to have a little look at the channel, uh, perhaps disclose some figures and also, um, as I say, give away some gifts. I also uh, thought it'd be quite fun to tell you what my uh, three biggest disappointments are since starting this channel and also three uh, changes that uh, I have made uh, or will be making um, to the channel as well so um, stay stay put for all of that and uh, uh, and it'll all be coming along and I'm hoping that this will be around about an hour like our usual uh, usual live streams so uh, who else has joined we've got Wayne Chan from China welcome Wayne I'm not sure I've had anyone from China before and my goodness me uh, no idea what the time is in China I'm guessing China spans uh, more than one time zone anyway but India is five and a half to six hours and China's a way east of that so mm, guessing it must be pretty late for you midnight around about um, and then we've got uh, Dan explaining current events uh, hello Dan uh, I think uh, I know who you are Another channel, another new channel from Dan uh, of Dan explaining current events. Uh, great, and then we've got uh, Ola Akande uh, from Buko, uh, Bukola from Canada. Okay, brilliant. So we've got a couple of Canadians, a uh, few Brits. Uh, we've got uh, someone from Africa, someone from China. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, I love that. I, what I love about um, 
YouTube is its international nature. And what I love about live streams is actually getting a little bit of interaction with people from all over the world simultaneously. And some of you who've been following me for quite a long time will know that one of the things I really wanted to do was to take all the content which I've made and charge for and, and start to add to it with a lot of free stuff online uh, using the YouTube channel. And so that's what this channel is all about. It's about sharing um, and making stuff available for free or for the cost of a, for the cost of having to watch, uh, sit through some adverts. Uh, oh, we've got, uh, uh, hello, that's Mahmoud from Bangladesh. Fantastic. Welcome. Uh, again, I'm not sure if anyone from Bangladesh and that's, that's kind of eastern edge of the South Indian subcontinent. So it must be, uh, must be getting on for midnight where you are, 11 o'clock or maybe 12 o'clock at night. So um, fantastic that you've taken the trouble uh, to uh, join us. And then C. Vivian says, really like all your videos. I wonder if you've actually watched all of my videos. I will tell you um, uh, a bit later how many there are. If you if you want to have a guess, uh, no prizes for this one, but uh, I'd be interested to see what you guess. How many videos are there on my channel at the moment? And it's a slightly imperfect figure because some of them are queued up uh, for future release but there are there is a I've got a precise number of videos um, that are uploaded to the channel at this moment uh, midnight from Hong Kong and China both right yes of course Hong Kong is basically China now isn't it it used to be part of the uh, uh, British Commonwealth but no longer um, and then we've got Riddler 76 uh, I know you're way way low um, and Nicola, it's 300. I'm not going to actually say whether that's uh, way low, way high or pretty close because that will um, uh, that will kind of influence people. But uh, so keep the guesses coming. Keep the guesses coming. Um, in terms of actual current news, nothing much. Um, uh, what have I got? I've died. So coming up, uh, one of the uh, many videos uh, that you're trying to guess how many there are uh, will be a video from a chap called Chris Ricard. It's a fantastic interview with Chris uh, that is edited and uploaded. And that is about, firstly, about project uh, discovery and requ gathering requirements and the process of doing it. But significantly, it's about how AI can help us with that. So uh, really looking forward to that. I also recorded uh, last week a video with a chap called James Lutit, who <clears throat> has written a new book. So he's written uh, this book, Leading Impactful Teams, um, and uh, this is a rather good book, uh, which I'll be telling you about, uh, or he'll be telling you about some of the ideas in it um, in the interview. Um, that probably is going to be uh, May time by the time I've edited it and scheduled it. Um, but uh, this book's rather good. Um, got another couple of interviews lined up uh, with um, and some you might notice actually I did stop doing videos around last summer I made a, a few this time last year put them up last summer um, and then didn't do any throughout the autumn and the plan was originally to drop doing interviews because people don't watch them as much as they watch my other videos and yet they take a long time to create um, they're fun to record but the editing is really not fun uh, it's a huge amount of editing to do because they're long and it just feels like a grind uh so i stopped doing them because i wasn't getting the, the views on them but then i decided at christmas that i wanted to do more things so this is a little bit of a look forward really at what's going to change on the channel or what's going to change with with kind of my work life is is really i want to do more things that i i enjoy for the reason for, because i think they're important and valuable so i decided that actually I enjoy doing the interviews, um, I will plough through through uh, the editing as much as I can. Um, but I wanted to get back to doing some interviews. So got another couple lined up. And I'm talking to a couple of other people uh, about videos. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, so Hamburg Gumble says 575, Ian Walters 435. See Vivian, it shows 616 videos, does it? That's interesting. Because <laughs> uh, there aren't. Uh, well, actually, uh, so who, who was it? It was. There was a YouTuber did a video as to why uh, YouTube uh, 
view counts are often wrong um, and it's because obviously you're trying to synchronize uh, views taking place all over the world uh, at simultaneously and so it's a difficult coding problem uh, no it's no I think I'm gonna say 4,000 plus is, is way high um, see Vivian I'm not sure I've watched all actually but quite a lot <laughs> The best is the one is about the length. The best thing is about the length and context of each. I've been watching all great, all great. Well, thank you very much. That's that's fantastic to hear. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would have thought the number of videos on the channel should not be that much of a problem to get synchronized, especially as I've not uploaded any in a in a week or so which means that it should have settled to the same figure. But I'm going to go off the figure that um, I have at the back end of the channel, which is called YouTube Studio, if you're not, um, if you're not a YouTuber and, and don't use it. So it's the, the app or the web pages that creators use to manage their, uh, their channel. And that is telling me that there aren't 400, uh, 616, but there are close. Uh, that is definitely the closest number. Um, so that's interesting. I'm not sure why that would show that, presumably on the front end. Um, but anyway, uh, it may be that my number is wrong, but it's close enough. It's close enough to win the prize that isn't a prize because there's no prizes for that. Um, so I, I, I will show you a bit later exactly which number I get. What have we got here? Uh, Riddler says, I refer to you coming up to interview and it's so helpful and clears the mind. I've also bought your packages, really helpful to me. Well, thank you very much for buying. Uh, I don't know what it is you've bought, but thank you very much for, for spending some money and uh, helping us <laughs> to fund, fund the channel. Because actually, this is pretty much what I do full time is make videos. And the only other main thing I do is write once a week, spend a, a day writing a long form article for the website. Um, and that takes up most of my time, uh, although I'm now releasing more and more of that time for other things but not for largely for income generation um, I'm getting to that stage where I'm fortunate enough I don't need to be working as hard uh, and therefore uh, but I'm not that sort of person that can give up work <laughs> easily so uh, I'm not working as hard so I'm actually doing more things that uh, I think uh, give back to the community I've mentioned on previous live streams that I'm um, doing uh, pro bono mentoring I'll say some more about that in a bit um, so let's get on let's let's uh, let's uh, flip across to the um, presentation that I've created is that gonna let me do that there we go uh, so 100,000 subscribers it's, uh, that, that felt impossible to reach in the early days of the channel uh, it really did and so I'm just so grateful that we've, we've got there. Uh, in particular, I'm grateful that, you know, 100,000 people have benefited from from the content that I made, because uh, that's why I make it. Interestingly, though, uh, about 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Uh, only about 10% of the video views are watched are by subscribed, which tells me two things. One is that if more people, if, if my subscriber number would be massive, getting on for a million, if everyone who watched subscribed, which I don't expect to happen, but it also tells me that a lot of people who are subscribed do not watch most of my videos. Uh, I'm guessing you just kind of pick and choose uh, from among them, unless you're, uh, unless you're C. Vivian uh, and watch most of them. <laughs> and I'm fairly sure uh, Nicola and Hambo and uh, Patrick uh, do too. So thank you for every view. Every view uh, counts. And um, every view makes a small contribution to the household budget. Um, I think YouTube, for a short while, actually published in the YouTube studio the figure uh, of how much they would pay you for a 1,000 views. Um, and it changed day to day. But they would give you the figure. And you could track the figure and see why some days you have more people watching but you made less money because the advertising rates went down um they don't actually show that figure anymore which is really odd i mean you could i suppose in principle calculate it because you can see any any one day how many views you've got and you can see on any one day how much advertising revenue you've earned but it was so there's no reason why they should hide it um so i find it a bit, a bit confusing um but anyway i think on average i make about five to ten dollars for every 
thousand views so um, a video a typical video on my channel will get about a thousand views in the first uh, year uh, and then fall away some of them will break out and do really well uh, but basically most videos earn me about ten dollars um, and it takes every video takes me about a day to make uh, on average it's about hour to two hours planning it out then there's about half an hour to an hour recording it then there's um, typically three to five hours editing it uh, and then there's the time it takes to create the thumbnail and to up upload it and put the description down so I, I reckon it's a good day's work to make a video some do extraordinarily well you know some of them I mean I've I haven't got any yet that have reached a million, but I've got some uh, in the hundreds. I've got a fair few in the hundreds of thousands. Now I think I've got. I think I'm over. I mean, I think I'm in double digits for the number of videos that have got over a hundred thousand viewers now. Um, so those ones are basically carrying uh, the channel in terms of making it worthwhile. Um, and so there's always the hope that the next video will be the one. Um, MS from Poland, welcome, MS. Uh, good to have you here um for a bit more interaction in the chat do put what your involvement is with project management particularly if i don't know you uh or don't recognize your name uh, uh you're not regular i recognize apart from the blue names i recognize uh ian waters i know you've been on the channel uh, on this screen a number of times um anyway let's uh let's go back here so what we're going to do i've that's interesting. Something very odd has happened here. What's going on? I just need to fiddle around with something for a moment. Bear with me. Properties. Because. Okay. Right. We have a bit of a glitch here. Bear with me while I try to figure out what's going on I'm just gonna restart something oh you are a bit of a pest aren't you <laughs> talk amongst yourselves put something in the chat while I just try to figure out why uh, my live my uh, PowerPoint deck is not running properly uh, so I'm going to go to there and I need this and I need to do this. Uh, right, now then, let's try to reconnect that, shall we? Okay, so that's reconnected that now. Has it worked? Yes, it has. Fantastic. So my apologies for that. Uh, so what we're going to be looking uh, at uh, is two things. We're going to start by looking back and then we're going to look forward. And uh, what I want to do uh, to start with is to say that the first prize I'm going to offer is going to be to what I consider to be the best answer in the chat to the question what changes or trends have made a big impact in the last decade and we're talking about a big impact on project management the profession the way we manage projects anything to do with project management um, so give me your answer in the chat um, I will pick the best one and at the end I will announce uh, that as one of the winners uh, for uh, the prize which is a substantial prize um, so um, put your answers in the chat. What do you think have been the big changes or trends that have made the biggest impact on either the profession, the way we do projects, or anything to do with project management in the last decade? Uh, there'll be another couple of questions along the way, and so I will gather the best answers for each of them. Oh, and I will, by the way, give giving you my answers. I've had the advantage of spending all day thinking about these things. So I hope uh, there will be some useful uh, thoughts for you, but please do put your thoughts into the chat about uh, what you think have been the be biggest, best trends. Um, and Hamburg Gumball 
dives in uh, with AI and data use. And by the way, if you think the same as someone who's already uh, put in an answer, um, that's absolutely fine. Put in your answer, but express it in a different way or perhaps go a little bit further than they did in explaining yourself uh, so that uh, I can see that uh, uh, your thinking is, is, your, is original and your own. Uh, so uh, Dawn uh, FD says um, Agile Manifesto and C. Vivian says technology on PM solutions. Okay. Um, keep the answers coming. Let's uh, see what we get. And by the way, if you have to, um, if you have to leave the stream before I announce who the winners are and uh, what to do if you are one of the winners, then uh, please do uh, watch on replay. Particularly, go towards the end where I'll be uh, announcing that um, and find out whether you're a winner and find out um, what to do. Uh, what have we got here? MS says the biggest change was turning from waterfall to add our methodologies, servant leaders instead of managers. Yep, I like that. I like that indeed. Um, Nicola says many people would say AI, AI, but I would say better algorithms powered by AI automation, in other words. OK, that's interesting because... Um, there are algorithms powered by AI that are not automation. And automation, I think, is different. It's, it's kind of a part of the big picture of AI. And, uh, and we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, C. Vivian says MS raised a good one. Yeah, the, 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 the change from waterfall to agile has been a big thing. Um, and it, one might argue that it all began, uh, as Dawn said, uh, with the Agile Manifesto. Of course, there were methodologies or frameworks or whatever you want to call them um, that we would recognise as Agile now uh, in existence before the Agile Manifesto. It was it was a it was a statement of what was in the air, like most manifestos, rather than a completely new original idea. But um, uh, so um, that's good. Right. Well, let's see what um, let's see what I put. Uh, you can continue to put your answers in um, if you're going to be cheeky and put your answer the same answer as I've just shown you um, please explain why you think it's a, a really good answer so I can tell it's your your thinking so uh, first one I'm going to pick up on is soft skills it seems that everyone knew that soft skills were important um, ever since I've been managing projects uh, back in the 90s but the big organization started to talk more about soft skills over the last 10 years and uh, PMI in particular has relabeled them power skills and kind of pretends it's invented the idea but um, I don't think they're new but there has been a kind of rise in the awareness of the importance of it um, and interestingly as we'll see a lot of people are still pulling up soft skills as being a trend for the future um, uh, I don't think it's a trend for the future, but I, I will talk a bit more about that. Um, uh, as a couple of people have said, rise of agile and as a result, hybrid. Um, and uh, I will actually uh, save that for a bit later as well. Uh, cloud based collaboration tools. Um, and I think Nikolai is, is on to something when he talks about al algorithms and stuff. Um, oh, VJ, what has VJ said? In the past decade, project management has been has seen a shift towards agile methodologies. Absolutely. Remote work adaptation, indeed, and digital tool utilisation. Uh, Data-driven decision-making for successful project outcomes. Yeah, I think what we've got there is uh, some things you've picked up, I think, have have uh, definitely been fully embedded now and, and, are, and are just developing and growing. Um, others are still relatively new. Um, and uh, so uh, that's an interesting comment there, VJ. Thank you very much. Um, virtual teams was a trend before COVID. COVID has embedded our... Um, 
I was going to say capabilities, but I don't think it has. It has embedded our understanding of the need to work uh, remotely, uh, that there are people who prefer to work from home, uh, but there are also many people who prefer to work uh, from an office uh, with their colleagues. Um, but COVID really accelerated the transition to um, remote working and I think the big challenge we have is that our understanding of how to do it really well is still not there. Uh, Hambo Gumbel says minus soft skills plus human skills. Interestingly, on uh, <laughs> on LinkedIn, it'll probably be. Um, uh, I think it might be the topic of my newsletter uh, on Thursday, my regular weekly newsletter to uh, members of my community. Um, which you're welcome to sign up to, by the way. I will grab you a, a link uh, uh, while I uh, do this. Um, let me just find that. Uh, but um, I'm, a friend of mine on LinkedIn asked a question about what should we be teaching people um, at universities about artificial intelligence. And a lot of people in that community, her community, replied uh, in one way or another, referring to the difference between artificial intelligence and real intelligence, RI. And RI was a term that I'd kind of been aware of but hadn't really thought about. And it occurred to me that the idea of artificial intelligence versus real intelligence feels to me, at best, a little arrogant, um, possibly. Um, at worst, quite disrespectful. Let's face it. There are all sorts of human beings with different types of intelligence. Um, we, we kind of think of intelligence as being the ability to read and write and think and stuff. But actually, some people are really supremely good at uh, physical skills and using their bodies, which don't involve a huge amount of what we might call academic intelligence. There are people who are brilliant um, at creating music, uh, creating images, um, and, and that these are all different sorts of intelligence. So what, what is real intelligence? And there are animals that have real intelligence. Um, I'm sure that's not what uh, people mean by real intelligence. So I argue that we shouldn't be talking about real intelligence. We should be talking about human intelligence um, uh, rather than real intelligence as, the, as, as a counterpoint to artificial intelligence. And then someone came back at me and said, well, hang on a moment. You know, there's a wide variety in human intelligence. So real intelligence is a better term because... But didn't explain why, because, um, yes, of course, there is a wide variety of different forms of human intelligence and different levels. Let's let's be blunt about it. Some people have more of a given type of intelligence than others. However, those others may have more of another type of human related intelligence. Um, I just think it's just slightly disrespectful uh, to say that your intelligence or my intelligence may not be enough to count as real intelligence. Um, so um, I think uh, human, I like any, <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, anything that starts to humanize the things we do is, is important. Um, uh, my, one of my pet peeves is that um, most organizations, when they take new people into the organization, they have an induction program. Um, in English, in, in British English, certainly, induction is also the word used um, for making a baby come uh, when it kind of doesn't want to. <laughs> uh, I just think that's not a very nice term. Uh, so um, I just prefer the word welcoming, which is much more human. Um, I'm struggling while I'm <laughs> wittering on to find the link to um, to my sign up uh, for my uh, where is it? Come on, there it is. Sure, I'm sure it'll be there somewhere. Ah, here we are. So if you if you don't get my newsletter, um, I do uh, a Friday, every Thursday morning, uh, UK time, I write a newsletter which goes out around lunchtime um, to, I think there's about 10,000 people now, so nowhere near the 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, click that link that I've just posted and you'll be able to sign up for the newsletter. Oh, look, look who's here. Im uh, influential PMO who wrote a newsletter himself over the weekend. Uh, Stuart Taylor, Influential PMO, uh, which I thought was so good. I had to comment, compliment him on it. Uh, his insight was brilliant. Uh, and my first instinct was, can I sit on that idea for a year and then pass it off as my own with nobody noticing? But 
no, of course I can't because that's not what we do. Um, anyway, uh, Nicola says, uh, my advisor does research on algorithmic management, uh, which he defines as the increased, increasing use of algorithms, often powered by AI, to take over key activities previously accomplished by human managers. I think that's going to happen. I think, yeah, that I, I've not heard it referred to as algorithmic management. But yes, increasingly, um, there are organisations already that are using um AI chatbots to provide management interventions one to one with with people. Um, we could talk about something called algorithmic PM, the increasing use of algorithms often powered by artificial intelligence to take over the activities previously accomplished by PM. Yes, absolutely. And if you've followed the channel for any length of time, you know I've spoken to uh, um, to uh, people who've developed software for portfolio prioritization that uses AI and for um, project planning that uses AI. And as I say, um, I'm just, I've spoke recently to Chris Rickard um, about how you can use AI for requirements, uh, gathering and statement. Um, Ian Walters, the acceptance for emotional intelligence. Yes, I think that has happened. I think emotional intelligence has kind of hit the project management community. I was, I was managing projects in the late 90s when I first was introduced to emotional intelligence, uh, a colleague of mine brought along the um, article that Daniel Goldman had written for Harvard Business Review, uh, which I think went along with the publication of his uh, book, Working with Emotional Intelligence. And uh, yeah, it blew me away. And, and over the years, that has embedded itself. So that now it's it's a no brainer. Project managers need to know about artificial intelligence. We don't not sorry about emotional intelligence, too many forms of intelligence. Um, uh, and, and we don't now say that this is a new thing you need to learn about. It's just core stuff. Um, so, uh, Influential PMO says, just about to head underground in London, but wanted to quickly offer my congratulations for your huge achievement. Well done, mate. Uh, that means he may not have uh, heard me mentioning how uh, good I thought his article was, so I may still get away with you using it myself. Just joking. Uh, Tunde Ade, another uh, regular uh, on the live streams, uh, turned up. Hi, Mike. Huge congratulations for 100,000 followers connections. Thank you very much, Tunde. Um, let's go back to uh, my list of uh, changes. Um, online learning. I think 10 years ago, what was that, 2014? That was when I was first dabbling with building, with, with, I, I got out my old video camera that I used to use for presentation skills training and made my first. Uh, training videos, putting my training courses and um, content online. That is now still available uh, uh, on Udemy and some of it is uh, some of the later ones that I did are available on my online PM courses channel. And it was really 20, late 2015 when I thought this is a big enough opportunity to create online PM courses. So I think that's a bang on there, um, online learning. LinkedIn, I have to say 10, 15 years ago, the project management community was nowhere near, nowhere near as vibrant and exciting with so many people commenting and offering good, good ideas and good content on LinkedIn as it is now. Uh, it's just fantastic now. And and people do it much better than I do. I, I, I accept that I am not good at the social part of social media. I don't enjoy creating social media posts and I don't like it's not what I'm good at. Uh, so, but people like uh, Stuart Taylor, influential PMO, who frequently during the week will put a thoughtful post up and he, and ask questions and engage with his audience in a way that I'd love to be able to do. Um, uh, it's fantastic. So LinkedIn is 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 fantastic resource now. And if you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, uh, please do find me on LinkedIn and uh, send me a link request and uh, just put a little kind of note to say how you found me and why you're linking with me. Um, next, Gen 7 handbooks, uh, Pinbox 7, AP, APM Box 7, Prince 2, 7, all have arrived. In fact, actually, during that time frame, uh, the 6th Gens all arrived as well. But we're now at 7th Gen, and 7th and Gen feels important because um, APM Box 7 was a moderately substantive change. Prince 2, 7, which is the most recent, uh, only appeared about six months ago, uh, was a moderately, you know, a few few really interesting additions pinbox 7 was revolutionary change uh, for apm and good on them for that um pmi has been very acquisitive over the last 10 years um disciplined agile and the pmo thing that i can never remember uh come to mind 
um, spreading their wings and uh, trying to take over the world. Um, Principles-based project management. So the Agile Manifesto, which um, Dawn mentioned, uh, was followed up a couple of years later with uh, Agile Principles. Um, and now it seems everyone's got principles. I think uh, is it Scaled Agile has principles. Um, there's the nearly universal project principles that Nada Rad uh, created, seven very good principles. And Nada was also one of the 12 principal authors of Pinbox 7, which has uh, 12 principles. I think that has, I think that's a really fruitful approach to project management, thinking about principles um, and probably underappreciated. Um, new methodologies, and I'm not going to pick out uh, the particularly the, the various agile methodologies because I, I don't know the dates of all of them. And I, I know I did a video of the history of project management and it probably has all the answers in. But the ones that I know and are dear to my heart are P3 uh, or P3 Express, as it's properly called, which was created by um, Frank Turley and Nader Rad. There's a couple of videos where I've interviewed each of them about that uh, separately, different aspects. And Flex by another friend of mine, uh, Elio Costa. Um, very innovative, uh, genuinely hybrid approaches to project management, but not by munging together, uh, but by actually creating something genuinely hybrid um, and very interesting methodologies. And I could add to that the fact that these are open source. Um, they're not like Scrum or Disciplined Agile, which PMI owns and will therefore be charging huge amounts for. Um, these are three individuals who have created some fantastic resources for us and made them um, open source uh, in the sense that they're, 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 you can use them under Creative Commons licenses. Um, so uh, do look those up. Uh, PMO, I mean, I think probably through the early part of the, the aughts, um, I, uh, and I would have been saying that PMOs need to really find a, a home themselves early on uh, well midway through my channel probably about five years ago I interviewed uh, Lindsay Scott for the channel who created um, a PMO competency handbook uh, for the first time and I think PMOs are mat have matured a lot in the last decade and then of course I've got to mention that artificial intelligence um, has hit in the last decade without a doubt um, Tunde says, is it possible to do a video for how to prepare for PM job interviews? Tunde, it is not only possible. I was going to say I have done one and now I'm wondering, have I? Uh, I thought I had. Uh, but maybe I haven't. Um, uh, and I can't look now, but yeah, let me write that down. Uh, prep for job. I think. You know how to get hold of me, by the way, uh, Tunde. Um, uh, and I'll be putting my email at the end of this again anyway. In fact, I'll paste it into the uh, chat. If you if you need, if you are preparing for one and want um, to take advantage of the fact that I'm doing 40 hours of pro bono uh, mentoring this year, um, get in touch and we can have a chat. It'd be nice to actually meet you properly. Um, but I f I'm fairly sure I've done certainly done one on I've done I've done videos on actually doing the interview and I've done a long form article on the questions that you get asked uh, so yeah maybe I haven't actually done one on preparing so that's a good call I will um, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that uh, Nicola says um, I love P3 Express did you see that P5 yeah P5 portfolio management methodology I was going to mention that and then it slipped my mind yes uh, P5 has come out as well. I had a quite a long conversation, I think it was with Nada, about trying to guess what all the other P's were. And I was pretty close uh, in my guesses on what all of them are. Because, yes, uh, portfolio is at the top of the hierarchy, isn't it? And, and P3 uh, projects, um, um, I, it's not for me to tell you uh, what I learned uh, about what P1, P2 and P4 are going to be. Um, you could probably guess as I did, uh, and there's a good chance you'll be nearly right, um, or possibly even completely right. I was nearly right, not quite. Uh, everything is fake. Congratulations, sir. Thank you for your great work. It's my pleasure. Everything's fake. You're very welcome. And C. Vivian, I think you have. I think I have. Oh, I have forgotten to press. Are you saying? No, no, I have. Uh, I'm not sure what I have. Anyway. Uh, anyway, onwards. Let's let's move on, because that's what we do. Uh, next, uh, another prize will be awarded, 
uh, to what I consider the best answer to this question. What changes trends will make a big impact in the next decade? So now I want you to look forward uh, and think about what is coming down the line and what do you think will be the trends, the changes that will have the biggest impact on uh, the profession, the way we operate as project managers, the way we do our projects, uh, anything to do with project management. Um, so Nicola says it's P1 task management, P2 technical aspects, uh, P4 program management, of course. That's pretty close to what I understand it to be. Um, is it public or did you guess? Uh, anyway um, it's not that hard to guess and that's that's pretty obvious I think one of those is a little wrong um, but there we go uh, see Vivian I think you have the interview clips I think you have the interview clips that must be a relate in relation to Tunde's question about job interviews uh, still not completely sure generative AI will be a game changer yes I think it will um, Oh, it's public, says <laughs> Nicola. Well, at least it was the uh, the B you missed out, not the L, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, um, I, th I in my mind P two is 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 product management, but I guess that is kind of technical aspects. So there we go. Uh, it will be domain knowledge. Uh, is that your answer to big impact next decade? Uh, not sure. Uh, not not sure I follow that one actually, uh, Tunde. Uh, so please say more. Uh, AI, one man mega businesses. <laughs> like uh, like Elon Musk. Is Elon Musk a real person or is he a, a one man mega business AI? Who knows? Um, there's a divisive character. Let's not talk about Elon Musk. So what other big changes can you foresee? I had to say AI is the obvious answer to pretty much everything when you're looking at the last decade and the next decade. Um, I'll post a link since I can. Yes, you can. That's right, because you've got a blue spanner symbol. Uh, great. There we are. Omimo. Yeah, that's the name of the new P3, P5, whatever holding website, isn't it? And I think it's a dreadful name. Uh, but never mind. Uh, next decade trends, standardization of project programs. Well, say more about that, Ian Walters. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. That is my answer to your question, says Tunde. It will be domain knowledge. OK. Right. I, I, I can infer what I think you mean by that. I think you mean that it will be more important to understand the domain in which we're operating as project managers. But that might not be what you've got in mind. So please do clarify. Likewise, I'm not really sure what, uh, Ian, you mean by uh, standardisation of project programmes, um, so please say more. Uh, VJ, in the next decade, advancements in AI and automation, integration of blockchain technology. Yep, I'd agree with both those. Optimization of remote work practice. I really hope we can find better ways to, to remote work. Um, and a focus on sustainability will be, make a big impact. Good. I'm not sure... Uh, not sure which one of those I'm, I'd kind of be marking you on, but uh, they're a good set of answers. Generalists over specialists, Hambo says. I think it's always been thus. Um, I think uh, uh, most project managers have seen ourselves as generalists in terms of the kinds of projects we deliver. Most by number. Um, uh, clearly, most by value of projects delivered uh, are specialists because they're the people working on the big uh, government military contracts and the big civil engineering contracts but uh, the most by number of project managers are probably generalists um, uh, what else C Vivian PM to involve more business analysts and data analysts task it would be nice to think wouldn't it that we can get our definitions better and better because that's one way to reduce risk and deliver better. Um, but of course, the trend towards agile uh, it means that we're probably going to be making less use of business analysts. Um, but maybe we need to figure out what maybe the answer to that 
uh, C. Vivian is that what we need to do is figure out how to involve analysts more effectively in the agile uh, framework. Um, data analysis, yeah, data analysis. I think that's going to be a big trend. Uh, everything is fake. Says uh, this is a bit more existential. Nice, uh, but I think there is a potential for there to be less contact with computers. At the moment, they they are the cornerstones of so much. But what about waste problems? The waste problems. So you're talking about the waste from decommissioning computers and basically filling landfill with bits of precious metals and bits of toxic metals. Not sure. Um, I think there. Ironically, I think you're onto something there. I think there's something about as we increasingly use AI effectively, it will free us up as humans to do more humaning and spend more time um, with the soft side. Um, so if that's what you mean, I, I think I agree. I don't know if communication, if I communicated that the best. Well, you communicated it well enough if I've interpreted you correctly, but if I have misinterpreted it, then I'll take, I'll take that on the chin as my, my, my bad, but um, I didn't quite get that. And Nicola says, uh, you see me coming. I think the trend of the algorithmic project management automation AI, including the increased use of generative AI, will be the biggest trend. Yeah. Uh, OK, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Everything is fake. Yes, that and the productivity problems businesses are facing day in, day out. Yeah. Now, interestingly, that's, I think I really like that. Uh, everything is fake. Um, it's going to write your name down. You may, may well win a prize. Uh, because I, one thing I didn't think of, which I think is absolutely true for a lot of the world, and certainly for the Western, the affluent Western world, is that we are now having an aging population and lower birth rates. And politically, I'm not going to pass judgment on it, but politically in many countries in Europe and in the US, there is a big feeling amongst the electorate that we should limit immigration, which, of course, means that we don't have enough young people to do the work to provide for the society that we want to create. And that means that, actually, uh, we, certainly in the UK, are hearing a lot about unfilled jobs. Um, and that means that businesses are facing the problems with the ability to get work done which isn't quite productivity but um, it's, it's related uh, all lean waste question mark says hambo gumball where now someone else talked about waste problems that was everything is fake yeah uh, okay ah dealing with with waste from the point of view of the way the way lean things about what ah, interesting okay well let me um do keep them coming, but I'm going to... Uh, oh, one's popped in. So everything is fake. We have Six Sigma to walk through process to reduce waste and productivity. Yep. Uh, be interesting to see how AI can be engaged in the Six Sigma process to find waste and eliminate it. That would be a great use case for AI. Um, I can see applications could be developed for that. Uh, I'm not sure whether whether or not that's what everything is fake was thinking, but Ian, I think you're onto something there. Anyway, I'm going to uh, share uh, my thoughts about uh, changes, and I'm going to put them into three categories because as I was thinking about this, I thought, you know what, I'm going to actually see what other people think, and it seemed to me that a lot of what you see in articles about future project management has been around for a long time. I wrote my first article on what was going to change in 2016, I think. Um, and and I, I foresaw some trends. And some of those are still coming up in the same articles today. So category one is nothing new. <laughs> it's the stuff that we've been talking about for years. Everyone's talking about it. It's not interesting. Yes, of course, these things have, have been happening for, for, for years and are going to continue to happen, but they're not exciting. Soft skills... Rise of Agile and Hybrid, Software Tools, Remote Teams, Talent Development, PMO, blah, blah, blah. We know because they've already, we've already acknowledged them as things that have happened in the last 10 years. Will they continue uh, uh, to be relevant and, and to evolve? Yes, of course they will, but that's not exciting. Category 2 changes, I, I think, are 
also familiar. We've been talking about them for a while. I've been in my articles. They've been in other people's articles. But I think these are genuinely of rising importance. And I've kind of lined them up. So I don't think soft skills is exciting at all. But science-driven soft skills, neuroscience. I did an interview with Carol Osterweil when she brought out her fantastic book. Let me, um, let me flip for a moment back uh, to me because I'm, I'm going to wave one of my favorite books for the last 10 years uh neuroscience for project success by carol osterwild do have a look at the interview i did with her do have a look at the long form article i wrote on the uh uh on my blog on, on my website uh, about neuroscience where i share my thoughts of the most interesting neuroscience uh, kind of the first things that project managers need to know about neuroscience, neuroscience um, and also uh, review the book as well. I think this is well worth buying. Um, I think we now need to get over ourselves with power skills and emotional intelligence. That's all very interesting and all very relevant, but we, if we don't know it by now, then we, we just need to catch up. But we now need to start getting really ahead and really understanding how neuroscience works. Carol has started to the process of understanding what we know about neuroscience and applying the stuff we know about uh, learning and leadership and teams and followership uh, and applying that to the project environment. But there's more to, more to learn. Um, second, the rise of Agile Hybrid. I think now that the huge majority of project managers who give a give a damn about these things actually will accept that all PM is hybrid. That that there's a, a massive tool set that comes out of the agile uh, mindset, and there's a massive tool set that has been around for many years that comes out of the uh, predictive mindset. But all project management is now open to draw from both tool sets, and. One of the things I, I really liked about one of the comments above, uh, which was by who wrote that down? I made a note of it because I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, uh, C. Vivian, I think, or was it MS? Um, but one of the comments was Agile Manifesto is a big change. And, and I don't think the Agile Manifesto in itself is big enough. But like a good manifesto, it triggered change in the world. And one of those big changes is that more new tools have hit the project management world from an agile direction than from a predictive direction. I'm, I'm hard pressed to think what new tools have, have a, a project managers using day to day that come out of a predictive background, but have arisen in the last 10 years, whereas last 20 years, let's say, whereas in Agile, there are massive tools that we're now applying in, in multiple different types of projects. So I think that's really interesting. I need to go back, flick back to see who actually said Agile Manifesto. It was Dawn. Dawn FD said Agile Manifesto. So I actually got that wrong. <laughs> well done, Mike. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so let me just uh, bear with me two seconds. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, next, remote teams. I actually put remote teams against that, and I clearly didn't intend to. Uh, what did I intend to say uh, where I put remote teams down? Uh, bear with me while I try to find, see if it's actually in my notes. Um, Remote teams was ah yeah somehow everything's got into a bit of a pickle uh oh i think i've kind of merged remote teams and talent and development and didn't spot that i'd done that i think where where we're seeing much more profound changes now is there are more and more people talking about and actually making changes in the way they do things connected with diversity inclusion equity and belonging the idea that teams work better uh, when they are as diverse as possible and when people of all backgrounds all members of the team actually feel that they are equally accepted by the team uh, and belong there um, not just that we you know include them but 
that they feel properly uh, welcome uh, as a full member of the team. Um, I think PMO, important, but I love uh, Helio Costa's use of the term VMO, Value Management Office. I think we, we the big kind of rising importance still is results, value, benefits driven PM. Um, Pinbox 7 really put value delivery at the forefront, rightly so. I think that's really important. Next is sustainability and green PM. A couple of people have mentioned that. Um, and data-driven PM. And again, another couple of people uh, talked about that. And sustainability is so important because climate change is a high severity, high likelihood risk to the existence of human humanity. There is a very high likelihood that millions, billions of people's lives will be threatened or made much, much harder by climate change. Um, so we need to uh, develop more and better sustainability me me metrics to measure what we are doing on our projects To because if we don't measure it, we don't deliver it. We need to think about whole life costing of everything we do. If we, if we build something out of plastic, we've got to think about how do we recover that plastic and not have it litter out, litter up our oceans. Um, this is just so, so important because our children are going to have to live with the consequences of what we do and their children will have to live with the consequences of what they do. And unless we start making changes uh, and we continue making changes and we do that with a real vigour and energy, then... Um, Oh, can I bring my slides back? Yes, I can. My apologies. I'm not very good at this. Like this, I think, is about the 35th, 36th. Uh, how many of these have I done? This is the 38th um, uh, live stream that I've done, and I'm still not very good at it. I do apologise. <laughs> I'm better live <laughs> in real in the real world. <laughs> I promise you. Uh, so. Uh, let's have a look. Actually, there's a couple of things here. Uh, Ian Walters, a realisation of waste materials needing a programme to ensure the reduction. Ah, absolutely. I totally agree with that, Ian. That's really good. Uh, everything is fake, says. Interesting, uh, C. Vivian. Uh, I'm a labourer and I'm totally versed in PM, so we'll look it up. I'm not totally versed in PM, so we'll look it up. Interesting. Uh, Tunde says, send the link for the interview on neuroscience. I think I have watched it and it was really good. Um, if one of you who's got a blue name and spanner against your name can find the link to my interview with Carol Osterweil, if you go to the home, to the channel page, the main channel page, there is a little search bar which will allow you to search just within my channel. Or if you go to the main YouTube search, just put in um, online PM courses, uh, Carol Osterweil, um, you'll find it. Oh, no, that's not it. Uh, Patrick's put something in there, though. Um, so if so, if, if one of you can do that, uh, that would be super. Um, and uh, I will. Uh, I, what I can do, I can't. I can't search YouTube because it kind of conflicts with the stream. But what I can do, I think, is find. Find it on my website which is let me just do that uh, escape command F and then we'll put in neuro so Carol Osterwell video probably someone's doing this while I'm doing it so the video the interview copy link oh look someone's put it up uh, I'll put it up again um, but I can also, because it's come up next to it, I can also put in the link to the article that I wrote about uh, neuroscience. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, so that's the answer to uh, you, Wayne. Uh, can you bring slides back? Done that. Great place to delve into more neuroscience. I approach to agile is in the community enterprise agility dot community that's great i might have a look at that later thank you very much patrick um so uh where are we i was talking about 
uh, diversity value of data and PM. We're, we're there, I think. Uh, we're there. I was doing my little rant about green, why green PM is so important. Um, oh, data-driven PM, what do we mean by that? I think fundamentally uh, the first uses will be twofold. One will be for making predictions, uh, particularly predictions on uh, schedule and budget, but also possibly predictions on risk. Um, and the second is decision-making, particularly things like portfolio uh, selection. Um, that will be um, there. Uh, so we're good on that. Right. Now, category two changes, as I say, are familiar but of rising importance. I've also um, tried to think about what we're missing if we just look at that list. What are people not talking about as much as they should be? Uh, what is not coming up very often um, in articles? Some of them you've mentioned. Um, so here's my view. Um, firstly, well-being and psychological safety. I think what the next step on from understanding neuroscience is taking um, well-being far, far, far more seriously um, because we know that project management is stressful. We know that project teams get stressed and we know that, that can have massive and adverse impacts on mental health. Um, plus the importance of psychological safety um, in an environment where what we're trying to do is highly risky uh, and highly ambiguous often and very complex and therefore people need to feel safe uh, to call out concerns and I genuinely don't think that we we are anywhere near where we need to be on that yet um, acceptance that all project management is hybrid is an important stage but what I'm sensing now is there is a movement to abandon the term hybrid and just call it all project management now I resist that at the moment because I don't think we're ready for it but it's it's there it's happening um, next artificial intelligence tools what do we not talk about enough a couple of you have mentioned it but I don't think we talk about automation enough robotic process automation is the ability to take a series of tasks and automate them and we can do that on our desktop computers um, with software like if this then that I don't use I don't use uh, Windows but Mac has uh, the ability to create a little kind of mini programs uh, uh, I can't what its tool is called because I don't actually use it but to uh, automate sequences of tasks uh, that will come uh, to a much bigger degree um, it's called I think it's called automator actually um, uh, so uh, but there there's I think there's a kind of lightweight version which is much easier to use than automator come what it is called so I think we're going to see much more automation um, and the ability to automate the tasks we do on project management, set up sequences of activities that will happen automatically. But the other thing is AI coding. A friend of mine runs a channel. I'm going to be seeing him tonight because we, we do Aikido together on a Tuesday evening. Um, he runs a channel uh, where he uh, codes in Kotlin and uh, describes the thought processes of an experienced software engineer uh, using a Kotlin. And he has on occasion uh, drawn down Kotlin code from artificial intelligence and you know it is remarkable what AI can do in terms of writing code um, it will not be uh, at the moment I think um, good coding is done by software engineers who know how to use AI to speed their process along a little bit um, it won't be uh, long I suspect before um, AI is really fundamentally part of uh, the development team um, so um, the scrum team will consist of a project manager, a scrum, sorry, a scrum master, a product owner and a development team, which includes AI um, as member. Um, remote teams. Um, again, I forgot to put in the, the change there, but the big change, I think, for remote teams is actually, I think the big change we're not talking about is the need to do some serious research into how to make remote teams work. Everything is fake, says automation needs to be built in, I think. Uh, if it has to be designed or worked on from consumer side of things, it will never become mainstream, in my opinion. Um, I think you're right, actually. I think we do need to... I think what, what we will start to see is more and more tools which make automation feel less like coding and more like 
telling your AI what you want it to do. Now, already, if you subscribe to the paid version of ChatGPT, you can train GPT instances um, to do specific things. And I think the way that we're training those now is just by writing text. So we're not having to find links and drag them in and add a little bit of coding around them or use the right boxes. We're just doing that. And I think that will happen. Um, and I think we'll be able to say to chat GPT uh, or the, there's rumors of a huge Apple release uh, later this year um, that Apple are working on their own AI tool, which will be uh, as powerful or more powerful than Siri or chat GPT. Um, there are also rumors that they're behind on it and that they won't be releasing it this year, but they'll be releasing partial uh, capability. But the idea, the, well, the speculation is that within 12 to 18 months, um, there will be a massive change to Siri, um, which is Apple's AI assistant. Um, and what Apple likes to do is it likes to not be first with anything but to be best uh, when it arrives a bit late. And it is possible that you will be able to tell Siri what you want to happen and explain your logic and thinking to it and it will automate it. And And I think that Apple won't be the first to do that. Um, they may do it really well and then everyone will have to do it as well as they do and so we'll start to see a lot more automation and i think there will be automation tools starting to be built into the project management software tools that we use uh, to manage our projects and to collaborate with one another this may be more hope than expectation but i think responsible and ethical pm is not being talked about enough. I did an interview with Karen Thompson about responsible project management. I think we need to lead ethically. I think we need to. Um, I think we need to uh, be better at uh, the whole responsibility of projects and project managers. And that links, if I skip over one, to delivering social value. I made a video video about what social value is because in the UK the APM is putting a lot of focus on social value. Um, I think we are now talking about value and benefits driven project management. I think what that means for the future is we will see increasing integration between project management and the enterprise. And we'll start to see the portfolio tier um, being locked in um, as an enterprise function much more. Um, we'll start to see real value management offices and uh, as a result, um, and probably facilitated by AI and, and data. Um, data storytelling. I think we need to move from um, the clunky data tools that we have now where we have to do a little bit of <laughs> automating or coding or whatever to get the fantastic diagrams that it can produce to find ways that which AI will probably quickly be able to do to communicate complex data insights in compelling ways. Um, and turn the data into stories that we can understand as humans. Um, Cybersecurity is massive. It's the, as much as anything else, it's it's the, the dark side to AI. Um, AI can not only hallucinate, but can be used by bad actors to impersonate and to fake and to deceive. And I don't doubt that you can use AI to code security breach software as well and so cyber security is going to become a massive thing and I'm going to link that to blockchain uh, I did a video on, on blockchain and why it's important for project managers and I think blockchain is one potential solution to the cyber security problem and finally project management as a service I grew up in project management as a consultant being hired out to deliver projects um, a company can now hire a consultancy to deliver its projects it can hire contractors to work within its organization, I think what we will start to see is companies saying, we will provide you with a long-term project management team, not to deliver a specific project, but to be embedded in your company. And, and I'm gonna call that project management as a service. Uh, everything is fake says, like Apple and Windows need to integrate it if it makes sense. 
I guess that's automation. Um, and everything is fake. Also says Steve Jobs said, when you pick up your phone, you should t it should turn on, and you put it down, it should turn off. Which actually, my iPhone kind of does as soon as I touch the screen. Actually, maybe even maybe even when I pick it up. No, I think I need to touch the screen. But if I leave it for a second, the screen will go off. Yeah, um, that's functional human-centered AI. That's what I think of when I think of mainstream AI. Well, of course, it doesn't take AI to, to sense a movement. Actually, I just picked up my phone again and it did turn on without me touching the screen. It doesn't take AI to sense a movement. That's just a sensor. But there's a, there's a kind of dark side. My wife won't have an Alexa in the house because she worries that it's listening to everything because it has to be listening to everything if it's to spot you saying, hello, Alexa, or whatever you say. Um, now... Uh, Alexa, I think, is Amazon. Um, a Amazon, um, you know, will say that it doesn't record any of this, but they're training AIs. So there's a price to pay for all of these, and we need to be mindful about the choices we make. Um, now, what about the big players in the PM world? Um, so my last question to you is, what do you think? Um, and you can look back and you can look forward. What are the most significant events regarding Project Management Institute, Association of Project Management, Prince2? What are the most significant events in the last 10 years? What do you think will be the significant changes uh, that they might make or instigate or support or advocate for in the next 10 years? Uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, good to see you. Take care. I'm overrunning, aren't I? We're nearly there. Um, in fact, actually, what I'm going to do is, I'm because we are running a bit late, I am going to uh, tell you, uh, give you my thoughts. So PMI, in the last 10 years, I think we've seen Pimbok 6 and 7, possibly 5 in that time frame. But the big change... The big changes in PMI have definitely been its acquisitions and the change in approach to not only to Pinbox in Pinbox 7, representing a change in approach to project management as a whole um, and a genuine embracement, embracement, embracing of um, hybrid project management, but also um, I would say both the CAPM and the PMP exams changed massively in their last iteration. And the syllabuses became wider and deeper and better, but tougher. Um, and of course, their acquisitions. And I think we're going to see those two tr that, those trends continue. I think the acquisitions will continue. There will probably be another acquisition in the next ten years, possibly another couple of big acquisitions. I think they 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 want to really embed themselves as the the big player. Um, they I think are starting. Uh, to take a serious interest in um, artificial intelligence. Uh, they were for a long time behind the APM in their uh, commissioning of research and considering it. I think they are trying to jump ahead. Um, they've got their chat GPT powered um, um, project management answer generator, uh, which basically is a version of chat GPT that's been fed all of their content uh, all the content that they have rights to uh, and will therefore draw its answers uh, from that, um, which is, you know, fantastic. Um, APM, um, Pinbox 7, AP, APM Box 7 was not as huge a leap for them as Pinbox 7 was for PMI. Um, both PMI and APM in the next 10 years will produce at least two more versions of their box, I would guess. Um, I know a little bit about what's going on at uh, APM because it's all public. They are working on uh, APM BOC uh, 8 at the moment. Um, and uh, so we'll see what that is. I, prob I know more than I can tell on that one, I'm afraid. Um, and, uh, but I don't really see a lot of big change uh, in the air with APM at the moment. Um, but they are getting closer to PMI. Um, I agree with Ian that one of the big changes is chartered status. Uh, APM is now chartered. Um, and I think PMI are way behind APM on their certification uh, 
standards in the sense that APM has four levels of certification, uh, the top level being chartered status. PMI has two, CAPM and PMP. PMP does, getting your PMP after four, three, four, five years of project management and passing an exam does not represent the pinnacle of the profession. I know that they, they kind of claim it does, it does not. Um, APM's chartered status sets a very high bar and the people who are chartered uh, APM members are without a doubt highly experienced and highly excellent. Uh, Prince 2 um, has changed hands again in the, in the last couple of years, um, no longer run by Axelos. Um, I have to say that I think it's in decline. I think Prince 2 will be less relevant in 10 years than it is now, uh, even in the UK where it is highly relevant. Uh, what have we got here? Oh, now, uh, Prince 2 being absorbed into another acquisition. I'm not sure whether you're predicting another one uh, or just observing the one that's recently happened, Hambo. Uh, William Howard, good afternoon. Welcome, William. Uh, VJ says, Pro Microsoft Project, Pimbok, Jira and Primavera. These are some of the big players in the PM world, according to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I think they are uh, all big players. Yeah, uh, But I don't know much about uh, what's going on in the software world so I, that's why I'm not commenting on uh, Microsoft Project Jira and Primavera but please do um, if you know uh, or predict any big changes in any of these uh, let us know in the chat MS everything changes they will find a way to catch up with technology but there will be new smaller players on the market as someone said one person big companies that there will be new possibilities yeah every, yeah, uh, that's an interesting point uh, MS, I think that we can't predict the disruptive changes that will happen and there may be a big disruptive change in terms of a player that comes out. I vote PMI, H have to hop off and replay this live stream. Enjoy the rest of the discussion, folks. Thanks and congrats, Mike. Thank you, C. Vivian. Uh, question for you, Mike, which is the best for PM? PMI, APM, Prince2. Uh, everything is the best today and nothing is better than anything else. Um, it, it depends on what your needs are, where you're working. Um, I think if you print, they're, they're all very different. PMI and APM are two representative organizations which represent project managers. They provide services for project managers and they provide certifications. Prince 2 is purely a certification based on a particular approach to delivering projects, which is relevant largely in the UK if you're delivering public sector projects. Um, there's a lot to learn for other project managers, so read the book, but don't you don't need the certification. Um, which is better, PMI or APM? Um, again, they have in individual strengths and weaknesses. That might be a good topic for a live stream. It certainly would be hard to do a, uh, a fixed video on that, so I'll give that some thought. Um, but it depends on what you want. They are both good. They, are, they both have a lot to offer. I, I severely deprecate uh, them, them both to a degree, but PMI more for the pricing policy. PMI is massively rich. Their, their accounts are public <laughs> and they are sitting on a huge stash of cash and yet they charge an absolute shed load of money uh, for their publications, which I think if their mission is education, could be a lot cheaper. I will say that, uh, for no, not for nothing. Uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're winding up. I just want to give you a little couple of statistics, uh, uh, scores on the door sort of thing. Um, so this channel, uh, after hitting 100,000 subscribers this morning, when I looked, had had 77.7 million views, uh, 461,000 watch hours, which means that if instead of 70 in those 7.7 .7 million views, people have been watching in total back to back for 461,000 hours. There are currently 101,000 subscribers. That's kind of rounded, but we're pretty close to that uh, figure. According to the back end of YouTube, it's telling me I have 604 video uploads. A small handful of those are not available for viewing for various different reasons. There are 64 playlists. You, uh, my audience, are made up mostly of male men, uh, about two thirds of you are men, a third of fem are women. Um, more than any other group are the 25 to 34 year olds. Uh, less than any other group are the over 55s. There are no 
uh, no under 18s recorded or to a rounding error as watching this and I shall have to have a word with my 15 year old daughter because why she is not watching my videos I don't know she's under strict instructions um, so that's just for fun the biggest success I've had over the years I think is you uh, my audience I think uh, I have learned a lot from my audience and I think uh, I have had a lot of feedback which suggests that I am doing good in the world my saddest disappointments. Firstly, uh, just before lockdown, I decided to launch uh, Management Courses, uh, sister channel. Um, it's been a big success in terms of there are lots of videos that people have got a lot out of. But financially, uh, it, I, it just is not covering the time I spend on it. And that means possibly uh, sometime in the not too distant future, I will have to stop making videos for that channel. Um, secondly, there have been videos I have made which have not done as well as I'd hoped and um, two series of videos that I really am proud of what I made but not many people have watched most of them are the Project Management Thoughts uh, videos where I kind of share an insight or a thought about project management uh, and my bite-sized PM Thoughts which are usually couple of minutes long uh, but where I take a, a, a quote um, and give my thoughts about uh, how that applies that quote applies to project management please do go watch those there there's two playlists uh, for with with all of them in them um, but they didn't do really very well um, and yeah I was very proud of them um, and thirdly I put a lot of work when PMI updated uh, the PMP exam um, the previous exam, uh, Marcus Kotko and I developed a, a PMI, a PMP study guide, um, and he wasn't interested in, in updating when they changed the syllabus and made it much bigger. Um, so I did it on my own, and I put a lot of work into it, and it hasn't sold very well, um, frankly. Um, so what do I learn from that? I learn from that that things don't always go as planned, um, of course. Um, and there are plenty of reasons that we as project managers can give for why things don't go well excuses if you like um, it's not my fault it's the client i didn't have enough time the stakeholders don't like me my budget was too small it's because i'm too old or too young or too experienced or too new or too corporate in my style or too informal in my style it's my upbringing it's my education it's my background it's my style i don't have the contacts the network or the backing um the project could never succeed it was just bad luck if you hear yourself using any of these excuses then bear in mind that these are just excuses I think you have to accept if you're going to be a project manager that things won't always go as you planned and therefore your strategy has to be firstly one of having a portfolio of things to, to do to try so that you're not reliant on the success of every one thing you need to think in terms of contingencies what ifs and, and prepare frankly um, I have a whole portfolio of, of ways of earning money a whole portfolio of different courses I offer a whole portfolio of different video types so if any one of them fails well I can't may not have been able to predict which one was going to fail but I was certainly sure that some of them would um, I may be disappointed that which ones failed but that's okay there's, there's always there and contingencies um, uh, you know as, as a self-employed person um, you know good tip if you're ever going to go self-employed is make sure you've got six months money in the bank um, also um, you need to be adaptable um, you need to be able to say you know what this isn't working I need to try and change it up a bit and eventually you also need the ability to say no uh, that's it I'm not going to put any more work into it um, it's not worth the effort and finally you need to be resilient you need to be able to say you know what that didn't work it wasn't me uh, in the sense that it was my f <laughs> it was my doing and I chose wrong and I didn't make or I didn't make it work but that's about what I did and the choices I made not who I am uh, what's new right three things I want to point out one is I'm starting to publish uh, and they're coming out on Sundays, I think, uh, every few weeks. Project management briefings. These are collections of pre-existing videos put together to give an overall view of a topic. Um, there are about half a dozen available at the moment. They're all in a in a playlist, um, and 
there will be more. For those of you who are avid viewers of the channel, you, they will be rehashing content you've all, excuse me, reusing content you've already seen. But I've had quite a lot of feedback that people want a kind of deep dive into a topic. I'm not going to be making any more courses because it takes a lot of time and uh, to make them and then, and then I have to sell them and not everyone can afford them. So I'm instead of making a course on project planning, I'm gathering videos that I've made on project planning for YouTube and putting them together so that you can learn about project planning or risk management or agile project management or whatever. And finally, uh, uh, no, not on finally, uh, let's go to the 40 hours. I decided at the start of this year or the very end of last year that I would give 40 hours worth of pro bono coaching and mentoring this year. So if you are or know someone who is a project manager who has a genuine need for coaching and mentoring, just a one hour session will make a difference to them um, and they can't afford uh, easily to pay for that at full rates from a coach or a mentor, then get in touch with me. Um, let me know a bit about you know what the topic is and yourself and we'll set up a Zoom call. And finally, um, I was approached by a company called Able Bees, um, and I've created a link to my uh, uh, registration on Able Bees. Um, Able Bees um, facilitates a crowdfunding of YouTube videos. I don't know whether this is going to work, um, but I said I'd join and see if anyone does it. If there's a topic of a video you want me to make, uh, you can pledge a certain amount of money uh, and uh, if I make the video uh, you are obliged to pay if I don't make the video you're not obliged to pay uh, but if enough people pledge and by the way I'm going to set the bar pretty low <laughs> uh, but if I start to see you know, a few pledges come through I will make the video if it's a video I think I can make competently uh, and enjoy making uh, and so it's a way of telling me what you want and putting a little bit of uh, incentive my way. Actually, another thing that's new is at the start of the year, I was persuaded that actually people do want to join as channel members and they don't care uh, if um, they don't get anything much for the membership. Um, a lot of people have given very generously, uh, some people on this uh, live stream at the moment, uh, given very generously to my buy me a coffee uh, page um, which is great um, so another way you can give generously if you want to um, is to join the channel as a channel member um, there is very little benefit and I make that very clear in the, the little one minute video uh, that you get uh, if you click the link um, it's a way to support me and the channel uh, to help me make videos um, only do it if you want to and only do it if you can easily afford to do it. It's £3.99 a month, uh, which is about $5 or four and a half euros. No idea what it is in other currencies, but it will appear in your local currency. The cost will appear in your local currency. Um, so I, one of the things you do get is my thanks. And so thank you very much to uh, Mabaraka Transport, uh, Abiodun uh, Adebusi, Abed Ad De Busuyi, sorry, uh, Rahel Johannes, uh, all of whom have joined in the last month and therefore they get the blue badge that says they've been members for a month. And then for two months uh, with, their, with their orange badge, uh, we've got Ubaseki, Andrew Drasdick Jr. and Pony Serim. I hope I pronounce those names at least barely competently. Uh, there's join buttons on the page, YouTube page with my videos. Um, you can have a look, watch the video and not join if you like. Um, but uh, it just gives me a little bit of income, uh, which is just very welcome. And it's lovely to have those. And I will be thinking about what I can do for my members throughout the year. But it won't be much. I can promise you that. Um, you, you, don't, you don't become a member because you expect to get a lot. Uh, right. Up comments. And then I'm going to uh, tell you what the prizes are and who I think won. Uh, so everything is fake. Uh, a run through of one of your old projects with all identifying info removed or slightly changed. OK, well, yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, thank you, Mike. It was good listening. Have a nice day. Hope you come back to check whether you've won anything because I think you might have. I think if I remember rightly, your name is on my list. So thank you very much, VJ. Uh, 
Uh, one of your PMs start to finish like timeline view, all the docs you used, when they were used, what ch changed, etc. Nothing like that in YouTube that I found yet. Okay, that will be a big job to uh, assemble that. Um, but um, certainly if you can, if, you, if, you, if you're interested, uh, that could be uh, worthwhile. Anyway, what's been my biggest surprise? When I started online PM courses, uh, I planned it out at the end of 2015, started implementing in 2016, and I planned to create a three tiers of core project management training. Um, and each tier would incorporate the tier below it, but then go further. So I refer to them as medium, large, and extra large in t-shirt sizes. Uh, the fast start program is about three, two and a half hours of content, video content. Skills mastery is about six hours, I think seven hours and the immersion program is about 14 hours of content and i always expected um, that the skills mastery program um, would be the best performer by far because you offer people uh, something a bit expensive and they go all oh, can't quite afford that will go down you offer them something cheap and they say oh i don't want the cheapest so they go up and so the middle one usually does best so i was absolutely shocked when i realized that um, in terms of the number of people who have bought uh, and enrolled on and, and worked on those courses, um, the middle one is the least popular by quite a, <laughs> quite a stretch. Um, so I thought, well, I can't offer the middle one as a prize. So I'm offering um, my immersion program, which is uh, uh, 14 hours of content as a prize uh, to some people. So if I name check you now, email me mike at onlinepmcourses.com and i will comp you in i will gift you a uh, lifetime subscription or lifetime access to the project manager's immersion program if you already own it let me know and i will find something else to give you because it is possible that you own it and i need to go through my notes so yeah vj redia bari who uh may have left by now but hope he'll be back um uh, or check in um you have won and there are two other winners um ms and dawn uh i think ms is your full name um and dawn is dawn fd that's it so ms dawn fd and vj get in touch with me um and you will win uh, you will get the immersion program. If you are watching this on replay, then put your best comments down below and in a week or so, in fact, I should set a deadline. It's the 2nd of April. So let's let's make it Friday week. So 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, uh, at 7, 13th. Oh, Friday, is there a Friday the 13th in, in April? That's a real shocker, isn't it? There isn't a Friday the 13th in April. Uh, there is a Friday the 12th. I did my sums wrong. So, uh, at the end of Friday the 12th, I will look at uh, all the comments and pick a couple of extra winners from the comments. So that's the plan. Um, so thank you all very much. Let's have one last look at the chat, see if there's any more comments to respond to. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Nicola. It looks like you've... Um, You've joined the membership. Thank you. Wow. Uh, Bernadette, thank you. Thank you for the claps. Uh, congratulations from everything. Thank you, MS. Get in touch with me. Dawn. Uh, sorry, not MS. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, my goodness, Dawn. Yes, get in touch with me. Ravenwolf. Wow, you're here <laughs> late, but maybe you've been lurking all through. Uh, nice to nice to have you here, uh, Ravenwolf Retro Tech. If you're interested in um, Commodore uh, Amiga type computers, um, and coding for them and taking them apart and rebuilding them, then check out Ravenwolf's uh, channel. It's, uh, it's really good there. Uh, Bernadette says, thank you, Mike. Hope to be part of your classes soon. Uh, I hope so too. We look forward to seeing you. Um, thank you all very much uh, for your attendance. I will lurk in the chat for a little while, but I'm going to stop the stream now. Um, thank you all very much. <laughs>